Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how I made uh, this riser. So for trailer risers I usually start with very simple waveforms um, because we don't really need any crazy wavetable modulation or something like that. Um, so for risers, the design process is pretty straightforward because we well have a really good idea of what kind of envelope we want for the sound. So um, I'm going to use uh, LFO1 in envelope mode for this and just draw in a curve similar to this. doesn't really matter, it just needs to be ascending. Um, let's actually set this to one bar and use LFO1 to uh, modulate uh, global pitch or voice transpose here. And we're also going to use this one to modulate the volume of our different um, oscillators that we're going to use. So let's actually go in there and set this maybe to uh, three octaves higher than. So we get this sound. Uh, which is not that interesting yet. But we're gonna add um, two more oscillators to this. And we are all, well, gonna pitch all of them differently. So let's actually pitch this one to three octaves higher as well. And then this one just to two oct octaves. And this one just one octave higher. And we can also use the unison here. Um, and use different voicings on the different oscillators. So the higher pitched ones are going to get more voices than the lower pitched ones. So for this one, we can go to the maximum of 16 voices and also more detuned than on the others. And here we are just going to go with maybe 12 and a bit more detuned than the 20%. And here maybe just four voicings. And detune is actually pretty fine at 20% here. So now we have this. Um, and at this point, I would probably go to the effects check section here. I'm just going to use one filter for this. And because it's a riser and the point of the riser is to um, increase intensity over time, you don't really want to give away the entire frequency spectrum right at the beginning. So I'm going to use LFO1 as well to um, modulate the cutoff here. So we can um, introduce the higher frequency spectrum here um, over time. And I usually don't like going all the way up. Um, I prefer to actually use distortion afterwards and use that to um, increase the density um, in the higher frequencies. So let's actually use just this soft clip here. This makes it pretty harsh um, in combination with the high frequencies here. So what I like to do with this, I like to modulate the drive. But I'm going to use a different shape because I want to use this to create some more movement as well. So I will use LFO2 in this case. And, um, so this is the type of movement that we are going for, but we want this to change over time as well. So I want to use LFO1 to um, modulate the frequency of LFO2. So this movement speeds up over time as, you know, everything else you know, gets louder and uh, increases pitch, this movement is gonna um, increase as well. So let's just set these two seconds here and set LFO1 to um, modulate the LFO2 frequency. Now we just need to find a good um, starting speed and a good um, maximum speed for this. Now it makes
makes sense to actually make this a bit longer. This can maybe go a bit faster, but not too much. Alright, this sounds okay. So now we can also use some EQ to um, cut some of the frequencies out, actually. So I'm going to use this to um, cut the lower mids. And I'm also going to use a shelf here to um, cut, cut the highs and also use this as some further movement. So I can also use LFO2 and use it on the gain here. So. We get some movement in there as well. And I will probably also use some reverb just to even things out a bit more. So that's pretty okay. Um, let's actually print this to audio. Let's make this longer. Okay, draw in the volume curve here. And now let's print some more versions of this. Maybe without this modulation here. with a different pitch here, so just one octave higher. And let's actually see how these sound together. But at first I'm gonna um, EQ some of these and I'm just gonna cut the lows on the highest one and also with the mids. Um, for this one, a bit of the lows, a bit of the mids as well. And this one is the main one with the movement. Let's actually leave this one as it is and see how this sounds together. So these two are too loud. Still. This sounds better. So let's actually compress this a bit and EQ this entire thing. So for risers, you usually don't really need like a super low end. So let's just cut this one out and also clean the mids up even more. Maybe try some multiband compression here. Um, and then some limiting, or let's actually use a utility and make sure that everything, if in case there is still something going on, you know, below, below roughly um, 200 hertz, then make sure that it's in mono. Yeah, there's not a lot going on anymore because of this, but still is good practice, I think. And the limiter, 
just to increase the volume a bit more. So let's listen to it from the start. So I think this is a pretty decent riser. You could play around with more um, variations of this. You can make it longer. You can actually um, get rid of um, the movement that we have in this one. Um, because you can always add it afterwards. Um, anyway, with a simple tremolo effect, you don't necessarily need to do this in your synthesizer. But you can print more different octaves. You can use different waveforms if you want. And maybe, you know, a few different settings in the effects section. You can also change um, the LFO here, which is the, you know, the main one that's pretty much controlling everything. Also controls LFO too. Um, so there's a lot to play around and get a lot of different variations of. <laughs> 